So what does creation define in terms of the creation day cycle? Is it mysterious? Do we really not know? Do we really not see four very well-defined compartments of time in the very first day from the beginning here? Of course we do. Scholars ignore them, but they can't, not any longer. Uh, and if they do, it just proves willing ignorance. Uh, in fact, most scholars get this one completely wrong, which is hard to even imagine, yet they do. They're stuck in a box and can't think and research for themselves. We will. This is where we come in and truly research these topics in which scholarship has failed us all. We don't care how many people watch a video, don't watch a video, or any of those things. We well know of the agitation and how YouTube is playing games, even right now, uh, taking really our enemies, allowing them to run the line share of the ads, and then complain that we are offensive to advertisers. Well, of course we are. They're the opposite religion, paradigm, whatever you want to call it, and of course they're offended by our content. Surprise, surprise. So what do they do? Of course, it costs us not to be in streams, and it costs us views. Who cares? We're going to keep functioning. It doesn't matter. Sure, that offends them, and they are welcome. We will now prove out the actual cycle of the day, broken into four compartments of time that, well, no one can actually debate, and it's hard to believe that there's a scholar on earth that would even try. And they're right there in the creation account. It's hilarious. We have our uh, When Does the Bible Day Begin series, where we've really spent a lot of time on this, proving this out uh, very, very well. What's the number one thing we hear in response, claiming that well, the, it defines the Bible day, a fragment, incredibly out of context, from the end of the creation day that says, we'll cover it, it was evening and it was morning, the first day. Indeed, that is beautiful scripture that they can't read because they're taking a fragment out of something that has a cycle well established. They forgot that he created all day, and it is evening, starts with, and it was evening, meaning it progresses and is not the start of the day. So sad these forget uh, that that's not the beginning of the creation day, but the end. And those measures are not the full measures in the text for the first day. Now let's test this, and everyone will see this even in this video, and if you really want to go into detail, watch the series, uh, When Does the Bible Day Begin? It will blow your mind, and no one will disprove it, that's for sure. Let's go to the end here of the first day in Genesis. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Did it just define a full day there? Uh, yeah, first day. No, not evening and morning. That cannot equal a day, not if you read the Hebrew. Did creation just start there? Well, uh, d didn't we read the rest of the, I mean, wasn't there a lot before that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy to realize that he created day already, uh, daylight, uh, and now it says and, which is a progression, right? So the days progressed and means evening's not the beginning, it's a continuation. So we already had day, daylight, and now it's evening and morning, the first day. Then the second day begins at daylight, sunrise, yet again. How can that work? Well, we'll get to it. Yes, wh why are so many uh, stuck re really in this thinking? Well, we were too at one time because this paradigm is steep. It is so well entrenched and it's a lot to unravel. Uh, and they did that on purpose to make this difficult, but we've unraveled it at this point, uh, definitively so. Somehow nothing happened before this, right? Well, that's, that, that is 
complete ignorance because it would be missing uh, the entire passage uh, up and to here. Uh, so that would be nonsense, and it starts with and. So that evening is the start of the clock here uh, is, is nonsense. Uh, the clock already started uh, because day was already created and identified. So how can you say evening is the start of the day? Nonsense. Um, it progressed to evening and starts with and it was evening, meaning now it's evening, right? But it wasn't before this. That's what it's saying. Hmm. This is so easy to see, yet we've all been programmed to focus only on evening and morning, thinking that somehow that's a day, yet in Hebrew it is not. In fact, those are the hours only of night, only of darkness. There's no day in evening and morning, except for evening starts at sundown, which is a little bit of daylight left, and morning ends at sunrise, which is a little bit of light before, but all the same. Uh, this is all night, and you know they'll just go and debate and argue and go around and around and around and around. Of course, it comes from Judaism because their whole calendar is set on the Babylonian lunar calendar, but the Bible is not. That's a lie. It's always been a lie. So they don't even realize they are defining a day as 12 hours, which is really ludicrous, uh, and, and they don't know Hebrew, and yet call themselves Jews or Hebrews, which Jews aren't Hebrews. Watch origin of the word, Jew. They don't realize it, and we used to as well, so don't take this as condemnation, but we're trying to correct things here, and somebody better do it because nobody else really is for the most part. There are very few who have gotten a hold of this and proven it out. After Elohim created during the daytime, we now see the culmination of the day. See, it progresses. So there's day, there's daylight. He created light, called it day, even told us it's daytime specifically. There it is right there. Can't miss it. How exactly do scholars? Uh, who knows? Uh, we do know. It's a paradigm they're stuck in. Uh, no one can overlook this. Elohim called that period day, as in daylight. Nothing to discuss. One cannot ignore that, and one can never set the Bible calendar on anything else except sunrise. As here, it is the beginning of time. Right here. It's right there. Again, watch when does the Bible day begin. Uh, series, and we do prove this out systematically uh, through the Old Testament, through the New Testament, and with lots and lots and lots of examples. The sun will also be created during the day, not night. We'll see that when we get to day four. Uh, and we'll begin timekeeping. Well, the sun would have to be created during the day in order to begin keeping time, would it not? Mm -hmm. It gave off its light, and that's during the day. These are not difficult concepts, yet a, there's a paradigm that tries to complicate them. Uh, the counting begins now. His calendar matters to him. He created it. No man can ever redefine it, uh, not without smacking Elohim in the face, of course, because he created in a calendar. I mean, it's a part of creation. This is a creation issue uh, and not something to even talk about Judaism or any religion out there because none of them were in existence then and they're not following it. They're following the Babylonian lunar calendar, uh, trying to call it the Bible one, yet it fails every test. And we have conducted many, 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 many. Can they read? Well, we don't think they want to. That's what it is, because it doesn't fit their paradigm. So they pull out this fragment, it was evening and morning, and forget that Yahuwah first created day or daytime, and created light during the daytime. So he says, right, if you believe him, uh, note, he said so. What scholar can overrule him? Well, none credibly, that's for sure. Uh, if they think they can, uh, run away from anything they teach. There you go. And Jubilees ends the first day with, For seven great works did he create on the first day. Okay, so that defines that there are seven works. We can go back and we can find the seven works, right, which includes the daytime, which includes, uh, which is dawn and day. Oops. 
can't miss that, uh, and includes night, uh, which is evening and night, or evening and morning, same thing in definition. Uh, so basically, uh, we just saw the darkness was a creation along with light. Uh, we saw last video the deep, which is land, the abysses were a creation. The waters aren't left over from some strange historic narrative, which comes from the occult, never from the Bible. Uh, it was created the first day, not before. And it is not just left over floating in space, uh, as so many have assumed in ignorance, because they ignore the witnesses of Genesis. They have never tested and most never read. They love their Pharisee canon, and they will defend it vigorously. There, no doubt, we get that all the time. Uh, even, uh, you know, the temple priests, they've redefined as Essenes in the dumbest paradigm ever. They were the sons of Zadok, the temple priests exiled there to Qumran. Uh, they were, in fact, fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy, preparing the way for Messiah in the wilderness, and John the Baptist rised out of their ranks. Very simple. Um, they were ordained to keep the Bible. Uh, in Deuteronomy, I think it's 31, that's off the top of my head, but I think that's right, by Moses, and never did that change. No one else ever received this charge all the way to the first century, so we found their library, we found Bible canon, the only Bible canon on record by the ordained keepers of canon. Now, we can follow these priests from their exile from the temple by the very so-called Jews or Pharisees to a place called Qumran, uh, which is Bethabara uh, in Greek or Betharaba in Hebrew. Joshua identifies it in where we call Qumran. Uh, maps, as far as the most ancient of Israel and all the way through 1901, identify that area as Bethabara as well. This has never been a mystery. So watch our original canon series and uh, you'll see we prove that. Oh, wait a minute. That's why we found such a huge library there. I mean, what was this affinity to all of this scripture being kept in this one place? Why? Because they were Essenes? You mean occult Kabbalists? That's so stupid. It's always been. Uh, it proves Bible canon from the only keepers ordained to keep it, the sons of Zadok, the temple leadership, who even left calendars based on the sun, not the moon, as the measure following Jubilees and First Enoch, they kept as Bible, canon, and Torah for Jubilees in their own words. We've covered that in this series. This is not a mystery. It exposes an entire paradigm of occultists in Phariseeism, which is modern Judaism, and that serves as the foundation of most churches. Yet, it is the opposite of the Bible and shouldn't be their foundation. No wonder they can't even read this simple narrative that even a child can understand, yet not a scholar in many cases. Now that's pretty bad. So do we go to the end of the book and say, well, it started there? Uh, what? <laughs> that's what those do that claim this narrative began in the evening. They skip the entire day to assume such. That's not literate. Uh, we have all been deceived with this, but when a scholar does this, it really becomes a clown circus. They look like fools because they're made to look like fools. They don't want to be, of course, but they do. Uh, they are supposed to be Hebrew experts even, yet can't seem to even look up the words used, nor understand the day clock is now set in this account. Uh, we had this conversation, we said, even with a bishop who just claimed, you just don't understand what the darkness was, you know. Uh, yeah, I think we covered that. But the word evening here, he doesn't even know this. He doesn't know the Hebrew. He's never studied it out. And there's many things that he doesn't know. Uh, he's sure he's a bishop, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, the word evening here in this late passage at the end of the first day of creation uh, which progressed is Ereb, which means exactly what it says. It's evening. Dusk, which is sunset or sundown. All right, that's well defined. It's not daylight, okay? Not in terms of the 12-hour day or the rough, you know, whatever the day is, depending on the time of year. That is night and darkness, not day and light. So, how can we say creation started then when day 
the, the light and day was already created first. Uh, it's pretty dumb. It always has been. Uh, so it was evening is already later in the day because we already had day. But what is this? Morning. And it was morning. So it was daytime and it was evening. Well, what comes next after evening? Well, what does morning mean? Ah, see, we look at it in English and then some assume that our modern English definition is morning, yet even our modern definition, morning is still dark too, okay? But in Hebrew, it's only the dark hours. Even common sense already tells you uh, as you're completing the day. I mean, you, you have A plus B plus C equals a day, right? And so A is 12 hours of daylight. B is six hours of night. So you have what? Six hours left, right? Pretty simple math. So that six hours must be the morning and it's darkness. There you go. Oh, guess what? That is the exact definition in Hebrew. So even common sense really goes there, but many scholars lack that, it, uh, it seems. Uh, and they haven't bothered to look at the Hebrew word. This is boker. It refers not to the daylight hours of morning. No, 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 no. But this morning is the dark hours leading up to and ending at sunrise. This word even means tomorrow. How about that? Because the day begins at sunrise. Tomorrow begins at sunrise. Never sunset. That's not Bible, ever. This is translated dawn, uh, which is appropriate because that is its end. It ends at dawn, at sunrise, uh, as a period, just as a reb is defined by dusk or sundown when it begins. So a reb is defined by its beginning, boker is defined by its ending. There you go. They equal night together, no matter how you break it down. And day is missing when you only look at it was evening, it was morning. You're missing 12 hours. You're missing the, the account because the account says day first. Light was created during the day. It was called day. So basically ending this passage, which began already, and creation occurred already before evening as it is a defined time period called day or daylight. And most scholars truly can't read this simple English and the Hebrew. Yes, generally, this is, this is interpreted morning, uh, but again, the dark hours of the morning, which we still call morning two, uh, and it ends at sunrise. That's the definition of this time period. Uh, you have evening, basically 6 p.m. to midnight uh, today. Uh, no, not exact, a ballpark, because we know the day changes, the sunlight, and you know the hours of the sun, the hours of the the uh, the the night the moon change uh, you know by seasons and that's the way you would set it up <coughs> no problem with that then the six hours of morning uh, midnight to about six a.m. basically at sunrise but sunrise whatever time that is because it moves but whatever time that is it's the sun that defines the ending of Bokeh, which is called morning here. Again, appropriately, but it's the dark hours of morning only. The times both of these words are translated uh, as day here, you see uh, in the definitions. We cover that in great detail uh, in When Does the Bible Day Begin? Uh, it requires other words that add time periods to it for it to equal a full day, okay? Although a day has... Uh, one morning, right? One 12 to 12 midnight to 6 a.m. And it has one evening. So you can, you can count by evenings, you know, evening to this evening, to that evening, to the, you know, you could do that and count days. So that's fine. Uh, but in definition, it is included with other words that define the period as day. So 12 hours a night uh, and Elohim created for how long of a time period the first day? Well, day is yom in Hebrew. So it sums it up at the end, the first day, yom. Uh, now, yom can be daylight, just like we use day today in English, okay? That's not, shouldn't be a foreign idea to anyone. Uh, the day could be the 12 hours of daylight, just as yom can be, or mostly in scripture, it is a full 
day of 24 hours and since creation. So really you have that whole mechanism there. Uh, you have all, all of those periods which add up to the 24 hours and it's summed up the first day, the second day. Yes, the sun, moon, uh, stars, uh, or the sun and the moon, yeah, the sun, moon, and stars stood still uh, in Joshua, but the clock did not change. Understand that because it's based on when the sun comes up and goes down and when the moon comes up and goes down. It, it's, it's, that is a, that is the period, okay? That just happens to be a day of more than 24 hours. Uh, and yeah, we, we lost uh, whatever uh, in time, but you wouldn't count a day. You wouldn't add a day. Uh, it's lost. Uh, a full day, uh, day and night is 24 hours. That's it. Uh, but here we had that one instance in all of history, never happened before and will never happen again uh, until, you know, the day of uh, final judgment. Some weird things will happen, but still. Uh, that's the same as we use in English uh, today. Uh, day is daytime. Uh, or an entire day, 24 hours, either way. Uh, in the creation account, this is super clear. It's being used the same way, uh, but let's chart it. Here's a chart of the creation day cycle, right, that you see here in Genesis, well-defined. Elohim began creating at sunrise as light was even defined as daytime. It's right there. That's what Yahuwah says. So if anyone doesn't believe that, well, then just don't pretend to believe the Bible. One cannot miss that and call themselves a Bible scholar, especially. That's for sure. Again, almost all do, and that's horrible. The abysses, waters, light, uh, you'll see uh, even the angels and spirits, uh, uh, will explain, uh, were created during this period of daytime on the creation day. No light was not created in the time period called night. I mean, that doesn't make any sense anyway. Yes, there was darkness, but on the face of the deep, looking down into the abyss, which we can replicate scientifically today very easily. So all day long, during daylight, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. roughly, and that's just rough, uh, Elohim created. Yes, Elohim knew the time without needing the sun, and it was his light, the light of Yahusha, which lit that period. He is already defining the 24-hour day, which does not require the sun. And you know what? It won't in the end. We showed you in Revelation. He labeled this the first Yom day, then the second, the third, the fourth day, and so on and so forth. The sun came the fourth. Uh, so he didn't need to wait for the sun in order to begin the count of a day as a pot of time of 24 hours, indisputably and very clearly here, laid out in its pods of only what can only be a 24-hour day. He already started according to him. Then the day progresses to night, when darkness is separated out as a creation now. Understand that. Uh, it's one of the seven on the first day. Not before, but now, yes, it is. That period of night is defined in this passage as evening, about 6 p.m. to midnight, again, roughly, and morning, the dark hours, beginning around midnight to about 6 a.m., or sunrise, which ends the morning, Bokeh. Uh, only refers to that period in its definition. It means even tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow begins at sunrise, never sunset. Uh, so you have 12 hours of daylight creation begins. Then it was evening, six hours plus morning, the remaining six hours of night, totaling 24 hours. There you go. This also proves uh, because this is written right there over and over, day by day at creation, each day is summed at the end as a yum, 24-hour day. That 24 hours is broken into two periods, day and night. And night is then broken into two periods itself, evening and morning, uh, cut in half, uh, basically, uh, which are not the daytime 
ever but equal night together. In fact, the word yom does not mean night exclusively. Uh, that's not its definition. Uh, it refers to daytime uh, or a 24-hour day uh, period. That's what it means. Yes, in prophecy, it can even be a thousand years. Yes, it can, but that has nothing to do with creation. Creation's not prophecy, and it is not summing up the time of man or the time of the world or the age of, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it's nonsensical to take that and try to use it here in creation. We're going to cover that as well. Is, is a day a thousand years? We're going to go there, don't worry. But it is not a reference to night by itself here, uh, which is another requirement of those claiming evening and morning are the whole time period of 24 hours here at creation, which is nonsense. It's only identifying 12, and you just miss the whole daytime. Uh, I, that's certainly not scholarly. Um, so that period's just night. This clock is right there, plain English, plain Hebrew, as a literal 24-hour day and nothing else. It leaves no room for a day being calculated as a thousand million billion years not happening, can't happen. Uh, is that a problem for the Bible and for Yahuwah? No. It's a problem for modern science, whom many of those scholars are placating very stupidly. Uh, they are lying making up all kinds of stuff in a vacuum of lies they can't prove and never bother to even test. The paradigm is so poor, and we're going to get to some of this in this series. Modern scientism uh, are not the experts on creation, and when uh, some denominations even defer to them, that is just craziness. Uh, the eyewitness who was there is, and none of them were, uh, so... They have nothing to say of credibility. Uh, this is the only account from an eyewitness to creation, right here in Genesis and Jubilees. Uh, the only credible account, period. No occult account is, certainly, and modern scientism, definitely not. Uh, how can, because it is the occult, in fact, that's what they lead to pretty much every time. How can we say these are seven literal days, though? I mean, doesn't all that science say different? Nope, not any of it. None. They have no way of dating the universe nor the earth. Uh, they make it up in fiction. Sure, they can run a math formula in a vacuum, and the formula makes sense. Sure it does, but that doesn't prove anything. That's not science, and that's why Tesla rebuked uh, Einstein, because Einstein was uh, redefining science uh, from the observation experiment, which it was, and the real scientist said, that's called fraud. Hmm. Well, because it is. Uh, that math formula can just as easily prove uh, you have three noses on your face. Of course you don't, but the math would say so, and the math is right. But we can look at your face and know that you don't. So, I mean, yeah, that's simplistic. But really, so is their claiming that that proves a position that turns out, oh, it's the occult religion, <laughs> not even science in the first place. How about that? The other problem scholars and academics who propagate longer periods here, uh, which the text most certainly does not, uh, so they're adding to Scripture in 11, let's be clear, uh, is that we have plants created on day three of creation. But see, the plants need the sun to survive. That's fact. Uh, which is created when? On day four. Oops. Uh, that's a problem uh, if it's thousands or millions or billions of years, is it not? Uh, not even the moon, by the way. The sun. That that provides the fuel for plants. So now, if there was a thousand or more years between day three and day four, well, the plants are dead already, so there's nothing scientific about that. Uh, it is illiterate and always has been. Imagine as well the water sitting there for a million years of nothing. I mean, it's just, it, what nonsensical, why would you, you would do that even? I mean, it just makes no sense. Uh, is Elohim incompetent and impotent? Well, that's the way they would like to view him. Uh, however, they cannot. 
Uh, did they take a break before they actually took a break on the seventh day? <laughs> hmm. Ah, what nonsense. And see how this pattern repeats itself in this fiction. Uh, I mean, it, the break is already there in the passage. It's the seventh day. That's when they break after creation's done. Uh, not in the middle of it at any point. So... Then they have people before people, angels before angels were created, earth before earth was created, heaven before heaven was created. You know, all of these things in this, this whole narrative. I mean, these guys can't really think in the slightest, those that propagate those things. Uh, it's certainly not logic. Not academic, not scholarship, that's for sure. But wait, the Bible says a day to Yahuwah is as a thousand years, right? Let's deal with that. Does that ever actually mean it applies to creation's yom day, which is 24 hours? Uh, no way. We'll show you. This comes from Psalm 90, uh, verses 3 through 5, as well as Peter will we'll cover next. Um, Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye, children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past. So a day is a thousand years. Uh, it's defining it that way, but what does it mean? And as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as a sleep. That's what happens when we die in Scripture, spirit sleep. Uh, this is about longevity, uh, how long time takes. This is broad swipes, which is how this is used both times it's used. It is not going back to the creation day and specifically redefining the yom there, the day, as a thousand years. Nonsense. That's not based on any scripture, which never says such, uh, and isn't even about creation here. Uh, but it's about the years of mankind, the age of man, the age of the earth. Uh, it's general, and, and there's a reason for that, because prophecy goes there as well. Because, see, David knew first Enoch uh, and uh, other texts, which, in fact, do go there. So, really, this is the beginning to the last days. It's not creation. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. So it goes on to uh, more so identify this is not about going back to creation and redefining the term day or yom as some scholars would like to do. They can't, uh, not effectively. Uh, it's always been a lie. Uh, this is so well laid out, especially in the creation account. It tells us that the period is 24 hours. It then calls daytime 12 hours plus six hours of evening, plus six hours of morning, or the dark hours of the morning leading up to sunrise. So that's a 12-hour period from sunset to sunrise. Uh, the 12 hours a day started it, so a total of 24. It's very easy to do the math uh, for those who can, right? Don't uh, know why scholars can't seem to count to 24 or even 6 or even 7 or, well, even 1, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and then try to insert that thousand years here uh, in this passage into creation. You can't. But let's go to Peter and just make sure. Second Peter 3, verses 7 through 9, in the KJV, of course, always. Uh, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. Now, we covered this. Uh, the same heaven and earth at creation are the same one. We have today. And Revelation calls that the first heaven and first earth, meaning, well, there is none before it. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, there you go, uh, and perdition of ungodly men. We all know when that is, the very end times, the day of judgment, when the wicked are consumed with fire and the heaven and earth are then remade. Not before, never happened before in any scripture. Uh, they just can't force that. But beloved... Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. What is Peter talking about here? Did he just go back to creation and redefine it? Not even remotely. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the yom in creation remains 24 hours. You can't change that because it already gives you the 12-hour period, 6-hour period, and 6-hour period totaling 24. It's there very, very specifically 
You just can't do it. Uh, sums up then that it's 24 hours. So no, you can't do that because 12 plus 6 plus 6 doesn't equal 1,000, does it? Duh. Oh, but maybe you can break them into periods up now. Stop, stop, stop. This is what they do. Uh, can that be changed based on this? No. Uh, yes, Peter is discussing heaven and earth, but notice the full context of this. Uh, it's entire time, the entire age of the heaven and earth, from its creation to the very end times. That is in thousands of years. And broken down in prophecy very specifically to thousand year periods. And we cover that very well. We'll talk about that in a second. But let's keep reading. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What promise? Well, his second coming uh, and the day of judgment. That's the promise that, that believers look forward to, of course. When the wicked are consumed and wickedness and evil disappear. Uh, the end, which is really a new beginning without evil. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, indeed, uh, he does want anyone, uh, you know, everyone to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to perish. But, of course, uh, most of mankind will choose to perish. Uh, they'll choose uh, that over him. Uh, this, though, is about, this passage is about longevity of mankind's era of the heaven and earth uh, from creation, uh, but to the very end times. Again, that's where he's injecting these periods of thousands of years because Peter knows prophecy, uh, and we cover that extremely well. Uh, you'll never find millions of years or billions, period, that doesn't exist in the Bible paradigm. They're just not there. Uh, even the thousands have a limit of less than 10,000 years, uh, closer to seven. Um, and you will find prophecies such as Daniel's 2300 days, where that word yom in prophecy does in fact mean years. Okay, But yes, not in Genesis 1. However, Daniel didn't go back and change creation. He can't. Uh, which defines itself four times in that same passage by the pods that equal 24 hours. So you just can't do it. You just can't. Now, um, that's not up for debate. It really isn't. It never has been. Uh, and the fact that it is debated so heavily is just incredible uh, that the paradigm of scholarship is that inept. Both of these passages refer to the time of man and when you read... First Enoch, it really serves as the basis for this mindset of seeing prophecy in 1,000-year periods as Enoch's seven weeks. No, not ten. It's only seven. We cover that very well. Watch that video. Uh, were 7,000 years, which we cover. Uh, Enoch defines, uh, so 7,000-year periods. That's why the 1,000 years. Uh, day is 1,000 years. So wait a minute. A day, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that makes sense too, doesn't it? Oh, yes, you know it does. Enoch defines 70 generations as well, uh, or 7,000 years. We cover that. Watch Enoch's 70 generations. Ezra defines 7,000 years. We see it over and over again. That is what Peter and David are talking about, not changing the creation clock, which is unlike modern scholars. These prophets would never attempt such blasphemy in ignorance. They weren't ignorant. Watch how much time is left. All those are there in that series. Uh, we cover all of those there. Uh, and though, no, we don't know the day or the hour. We don't. But even Messiah said, we would know the season, and you can too. It's a ballpark. We don't have exacts. We can't probably have them uh, according to Scripture, and that's okay. But we should know the season. But there's an even better firm definition that Yom in Genesis 1 refers to a 24-hour day right there in the creation account yet again. Remember the seventh day of creation, which is Yom, 24-hour day, is called the Sabbath 
day. Many times in scripture. Here's Exodus 20, verse 11, in which Moses refers specifically to the Sabbath of creation. Ah, yeah, because Moses says he kept the same Sabbath of the seventh day of creation. Understand he says that, so that's never been in dispute. And then Hebrews 4 defines that is the same Sabbath that they're keeping after Messiah ascended to heaven. Thus, it never changed. The Catholic Church can't change it 300 years later. Duh. For in six days, Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, uh, or that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore Yahuwah blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. He set it apart. Moses, uh, who also wrote Genesis, uh, we prove that first in the series to start off, because that's a big one that you got to set aside before we can move forward, right? Says when he wrote the seventh day of creation, uh, he most certainly meant a 24-hour day as the Sabbath day. Is that day period? That's the time. That's the pod. It's a 24-hour day. The Sabbath proves it. It was hallowed, made sacred, the seventh day of creation, which is a day of 24 hours. And the six days are also the same word, yom, and 24-hour days as well. Very well defined here by Moses, the author of Genesis. See, for each of these. Yes, he is talking about the creation seven days right here as 24-hour days period. And this has never been up for debate. Moses settles it. Does that make the earth younger than the largely satanic paradigm calling themselves scientists today? Indeed it does. And that is a problem. Oh, not for the Bible. That's a problem for them, not for Yahuwah. He doesn't have to prove anything. He was there. And he had the events recorded many times over in the most valid history ever. What did they have? Guesses in a vacuum of stupidity. Uh, yeah. That even defies the definition of science. Doesn't make a position. Sorry. Uh, just because they hate him and tack doesn't mean he's removed from his throne. Just because they stick up their middle finger in profanity doesn't make them experts. And they say some of the dumbest things uh, we will test later in this series. A creation day, Yom in Hebrew, is 24 hours. Always has been, always will be. Those of no faith think Elohim impotent and claim it is not possible that he could even create in just six days all those things. Yet that leads to a spiral down the rabbit hole, which is where they go, uh, and leads to not questioning. See, if one is questioning, they're looking for logical answers. Those aren't. That is not what's happening there. They are scoffing. They are ridiculing. And Second Peter 3 warned they are going to do so in future prophecy, which we're seeing unfold right before our eyes in willing ignorance. That's Peter's word, not ours, though we do love it. Uh, the reality is they hate Yahuwah and Yahusha both, and they want to undermine the Bible in order to install the occult, and they're caught here. It doesn't matter if they call themselves atheists, as to be atheists is to be a literal Satanist. Following his doctrine in the Garden of Eden, ye shall be as gods, because they're making themselves gods. An atheist doesn't believe in God, Elohim, he or she believes they are their own God, because whatever they think is law, well, then they're their own God, whether they admit it or not really doesn't matter. That's not new, though. That's the doctrine of Satan from the Garden of Eden. Now, we've put a lot of research into this topic of the Bible day, uh, beginning research really in trying to figure out uh, how to restore the, the full calendar, 
which is a monumental task. It's not easy at all. Um, nobody really has, and uh, we wish someone else would, because <laughs> that's a really big one, but uh, it is what it is. Including going into the Old and New Testaments and testing their timelines to determine when, especially Moses says, the Bible day begins, uh, when Messiah said so, and demonstrated extremely well in his death and resurrection in the Gospels, which we chart even. Uh, we're entering the Passover in the seven days of unleavened bread, uh, this time of year, in fact, when this video is coming out, and it begins at sunset, right? Well, yes, it does, because Passover is an evening event historically. But they did not kill the lamb until after sundown, and that drives that timing. But we chart and calculate the dates associated uh, to the seven days of unleavened bread. And it turns out, though the feast is the exception beginning at sunset uh, to sunset, and yes, it does for seven days, the calendar, when you chart those dates out, actually proves the day changes at sunrise each of those days. This is the same for the Day of Atonement uh, as a feast, which really is a fast. But um, many only read one passage in Leviticus while missing the second, which actually has the detail of that event. It begins in the evening at sundown on Abib 9 and ends sundown on Abib 10, which is 24-hour period defined as two different days. Hmm. Now, that means the day changed at sunrise, not sunset, uh, and both of these, actually, that many try to use as uh, some sort of ammunition against this position, uh, actually prove the day begins at sunrise, the opposite of what many of them are trying to say. Uh, the calendar date changes not at sunset, not even possible, but in between at sunrise. This is throughout Torah. Uh, especially when Moses indicated sunrise is tomorrow. Um, that's what he says uh, several times. It's in the Passover accounts. Uh, it's in the manna accounts. It's all over the place. Uh, even in the story of Lot, it's in Joshua, it's in Judges, etc. It's also in the Acts, uh, the writings of Paul, and so on as well. Uh, incredibly well-defined and supported throughout Scripture, but it has always been firmly preserved right there and very easy to read uh, in the creation account. And again, almost every scholar has this wrong, and that's sad. No wonder we are warned by Daniel that the B system would change times and laws, and indeed it has. So Yahusha is the light of the world at creation, the light and in the very end, as his light will light all of the earth in New Jerusalem, day and night. John knew. We should too. We can understand the light and the darkness completely with no mysteries whatsoever, really. Uh, scripture does not leave those for modern scholars to manipulate and weave in and out of in strange concepts that just so happen to lead to sowing in the occult into the Bible disgusting. No, thank you. The day structure is completely identified in Genesis alone, not to mention with its witnesses. The Bible never has uh, any other beginning to the Bible day than that of the rising of the sun, period. It's there many, many, many times. Even the book of First Enoch charts it the 364 days of the year every day. How about that? Indeed, these were seven literal, very well-defined 24-hour days of creation. And yes, Elohim was and is capable of doing so. They are not impotent. The lack of faith it requires, especially for a scholar, to question that, uh, which is clearly Bible fact, demonstrates a lot of them just plain do not believe it, uh, nor do they represent the Bible at all. That sets their foundation, and when they get this so wrong, one must really question whether they are even in a relationship with Yahusha at all. Wow. What incredible revelation waiting for us right there in the restoration of this creation account. This is so important, and we are only just beginning, folks. 
day one itself will continue in the next video and then we'll move on into the firmament fully defining what scripture says it is and nothing else even matters in such interpretation uh, and the rest of scripture yes we are addressing scholars along the way here uh, with very strong language and we will continue to uh, the situation calls for it and we will follow the example of messiah and the prophets in doing so that's how they handled pharisees and scholars however the beauty of the word is so precious and that's the real point here in the end we are all going to be able to say we believe the creation account as it is written originally because the bible is truth the only truth folks yah bless we have over 470 videos on this channel one for every day of the year plus now uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in tagalog for filipinos and now six in spanish to start we also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is available for all of our videos pretty much as well. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. That is our only Facebook page, only one that we're checking and using. Uh, if you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab, links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. Uh, and actually, I correct that, it's now seven. How about that? Uh, with our new release, the first book of bible history illustrated enoch's animal dream visions we also have now launched oh your philippines coffee table book in the u.s canada uk and many overseas markets on amazon and it's available in hardcover or soft cover there also this uh first book of bible history illustrated is available only in color we're not even doing this in black and white only in color and you can get it in color uh soft cover or hardcover on amazon uh, coming to the Philippines soon, not yet, we're not there yet, but we will get there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors, as so many had requested that overseas, uh, rightfully so. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippine copies have color maps inside already. Uh, that too is available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, both in color or in black and white soft cover, if you wish. Uh, all books, including Solomon's Treasurer, are now free in ebook. Uh, we're not going to do an ebook for this one because we have this video series animated, and we're going to release one with all five uh, as one video as well. So, no need to do an ebook when we'll have the video animation. Uh, more coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.